Zeus. I'm talking to you now not as a father-in-law to his son-in-law, but even as Dr. Randall, chief of surgery, to Dr. Alden, his young associate, but as man to man. Yes, sir. Bruce, you're destroying yourself by wallowing in a swamp of desire. I don't expect you to understand it, sir. I... I don't understand it myself. You're risking a brilliant medical career. Four lovely children. Fifteen years of marriage. For what? For her. Don't you understand? For her. She's vicious, pleasure-seeking, immoral, self-centered. I don't care. I can't live without... Ah, oh, it's me. That girl! <laughs> you to consider what this madness may do to innocent people. Not again. You won't think of Bruce or my daughter Miriam. Think of their four helpless little children. Oh, Dr. Randall, I'm just a helpless little child myself. <laughs> Bruce! Be with us tomorrow when Sheila's wanton lust for life threatens the marriage of Dr. Alden and his brave little family. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I was trying so hard to be good. No. I mean, Sheila was awful. You were great. Really? You mean you really liked my performance? You showed us enough rottenness to keep that character going for months. <laughs> well, I'll be rotten as long as it lasts. <laughs> what a day! Judy, you can't believe a day like I had today. Such a big part three whole thing. And when I wasn't on, they were talking about me. Oh, and what they said. And the whole building was watching, and my mother called. And I never realized what a huge audience a soap opera has. Are you kidding? Everybody watches it. Oh, and you're going to be a real celebrity. Now, Judy, I know this sounds crazy, but people actually seem to recognize me in the subway coming home. Anne Marie, girl television star. You want to come over and have a sandwich? No, thanks. I've got a date for lunch. Oh, at some fancy restaurant? The fanciest. Oh, how exciting. With a television producer? No, with Donald. I'm meeting him at Saul's Delicatessen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two corned beefs, lean. One cream soda, one milk. Milk? <laughs> The director said I was awful. I mean, he really hated me. And you're happy about that? Yes. The rottener Sheila is, the longer I stay on the show. And she is so rotten, Donald. Here's a carmy sandwiches. Lean. Thank you. You promised a picture. Where is it? Oh, Saul, I didn't know you were serious. Certainly. I'm moving Burl over the bologna, and you're getting the place of honor over the bagels. Donald, isn't that exciting? Saul's gonna put my picture over the bagels. Yeah, if we can get him to put mine over the cream cheese, we got a sandwich. <laughs> Listen, Anne, I got the call from my parents. They're definitely coming. Definitely coming? I didn't know they were indefinitely coming. Well, I didn't want to mention it to you until I was sure they were coming. They're coming. Well, great. When? In a few days. I'm very anxious for you to meet them. So, well, I'm anxious to meet them. Good, because you're going to meet them. <laughs> you know we had to find some really fabulous places to take them. We could take them to some good restaurants and the theater and the fights. Wait a minute, what's my mother going to do with the fights? Well, your father might like them, and we should take them to Rocky's. Now, that's a very elegant restaurant, and a lot of actors go there. And it's typically New York. What's the matter? 
Those ladies keep staring at me. Maybe it's because I'm drinking milk with a corned beef sandwich. Donald, I think she's staring at me. Why? You got cream soda. I was telling Judy how people are recognizing me now from that soap opera. Oh, oh yeah. I guess a lot of people do see you. It's really amazing, Donald. I mean, everywhere I go now, people seem to look at me just a little bit longer than they used to. Honey, aren't you uh, exaggerating a bit? Well, it's a small part, but a lot of people watch it. Oh, Donald, they're coming over. Maybe they're going to ask me for my autograph. Don't I know you? You look familiar. Don't I know you from somewhere? Oh, well, I think maybe it's because I... Don't tell me. I know I've seen you before. <laughs> you know, I never forget a face. <laughs> well, I think the reason I look familiar to you is... Anne-Marie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Helen Marie's daughter. She was as fat and round as a cantaloupe. <laughs> well, uh, when you talk to your mother, be sure and say that Rose from Yonkers was asking after her, won't you? Yes, Bye. I will. Bye-bye. <laughs> I certainly hope Saul didn't hear that. Why? Burl will be back over the bagels. <laughs> okay, now, here I come. Tell me what you think and be perfectly frank. Oh! Do you look sexy? <laughs> I do? Oh, that's terrible. I don't want to look sexy the first time I meet Don's parents. How do you want to look? Likeable. So wear a likeable dress. What do you think is more likeable, tweed or jersey? Look, they're like you no matter what you wear. I don't understand. Why are you so nervous? Well, you know. What happened the first time you met Leon's parents? His mother said, how would you like to meet my son, the doctor? Oh, really? Then they liked you right away. Oh, yes. It was Leon I had the trouble with. Okay, now, here I come. This is a little more conservative. Tell me what you think. Now, that's a likable dress. <laughs> you really think she'll like me in it? You can't miss. <laughs> <laughs> certainly is a fancy place. Donald said she suggested it. I haven't seen a menu, but I'm sure it's very expensive. Why? Well, you know how those New York girls are. Oh, here they are. Dad, Mother, this is Anne Marie. Well, it's nice to meet you, young lady. Thank you. It's nice to meet you, sir. Yeah. And it's very nice meeting you, too, Mrs. Hollinger. Yes. Well, I certainly hope we didn't keep you waiting too long. Oh, not at all. We left early and walked over. <laughs> well, it's a nice night for that. I thought it was quite cold. <laughs> yes, it's a bit chilly. Well, did you two have a nice day? Mom, did you go to that store Anne suggested? Oh, you mean that place on your Third Avenue? Yes. Did you find anything you liked? No. No, Donald's father and I never did like old furniture full of dust and dirt. A uh, waiter? Uh, shall we order? Wouldn't anyone like a drink? Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, no, no, thank you. I don't drink. But don't let that stop you. Oh, no, I was just ordering because I thought everybody else was, but they're not, so I won't. We'll order. Boy, that was great. <laughs> Wasn't it a great suggestion of Ann's coming to Rockies? Yes, sir. Nothing like a good bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> How did you like the scallopini, Mrs. Ollinger? It was a bit too spicy for me. <laughs> well, at least you saw a lot of famous actors here. What kind are they? I never saw them in a movie. Well, this place is very popular with the Broadway crowd. Oh, speaking of Broadway, you remember Florence Waters? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is she here? Well, not exactly. Florence is a wonderful girl. She started a theater in Shelton, and people come all the way from Ferguson just to see those plays. She not only stars in them, but she directs them, too. Oh. 
Well, she certainly sounds talented. She is. And she was always crazy about Donald. Uh, mother, uh, I went out with her exactly once, and that was as a favor to a brother. Cynthia Nagel's been asking for you. You know, she's teaching kindergarten now. She's a wonderful teacher, loves children. Well, you certainly went out with her more than once, Donald. Uh, yes, Mother. <laughs> well, that was when I was in high school. And you remember Harriet Green? Uh, Fat Harriet? Well, she slimmed down considerably, and, and she asks about you all the time. Mother, look, this can't be very interesting to Anne. Oh, you're right. Small town talk must be very boring to a New Yorker. Oh, no. You know, actually, I'm from a small town myself. Bruce to New York. It's still New York. <laughs> no, 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 Donald. I know I'm right. Honey, it isn't that she doesn't like you. It's just that she isn't very demonstrative. Oh, she was plenty demonstrative about Florence and Cecily. About uh, Cynthia. And all your other Shelton playmates. And she was plenty demonstrative to me, too. Oh. She demonstrated that she hates me. Honey, she may have been a little cool. Cool? Freezing. Freezing is more like it. Sweetheart, you are exaggerating. Any mother of a son, I think, would feel the same way about a girl who someday might be that son's uh, the prospective person. Oh, Donald. Now, she didn't like the restaurant I recommended, and she didn't like my shop on 3rd Avenue. And I heard her whisper to your father that she thought my dress was too short. All right, and, and listen. You know, you know what I think it may be? To my mother, you're a city girl. And, well, she's just kind of overwhelmed with New York and... Well, let's face it, she just doesn't have a good sense of humor. <laughs> she sure doesn't. Wait a minute, what do you mean by that? I mean what you mean. Well, I'm not so sure you mean the same thing as I do. Well, what do you think I mean? I think you mean you don't like my mother. Donald, I didn't say that, and it's your mother who doesn't like me. And she doesn't know you. See, you admit she doesn't like me. I admit no such thing. And you're on her side, too. And I am on nobody's side, but that woman just happens to be my mother. Well, who do I just happen to be? Well, right now, you happen to be a very hysterical woman. <laughs> well, maybe you just ought to go and see your mother. Yeah. Yeah, 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 maybe I ought. Yeah, you can go see Fat Area, too. <laughs> I thought I'd find you here. Oh, you again. How dare you break in here like this? I've come to fetch Bruce. His house has been robbed, his wife is gravely ill, and is being sued for malpractice. It's always something. What is it, son? I... It's nothing. It's just, just a headache. Are you coming? I must go. If this is all it takes for you to desert me, don't you ever come back. <laughs> ever. Scott! Joe, I want to talk to you about those lights. You can relax for a few minutes and study your lines. So this is where my son works. Yeah, this is it. Wait, you ready for lunch? Uh, wait a minute. I want to get some shots of the two of you. Now look natural and uh, talk to each other. As a matter of fact, Mother, I do want to talk to you about Anne. Who, dear? Anne. She's a fine-looking girl, Don. Good ankles. <laughs> Smile, Donald. Mother, Anne was very anxious for you to like her, and you were very unfriendly. I'd like to know why. All right, dear. Mildred. The boy asked me, Father. Yes, Mother, I asked you because I really want to know. I mean, you seemed to dislike her before you even met her, before you even said hello to her. I know her better than you think. I'm going on the observation deck. I heard all this. It just so happened she's on my favorite soap opera. Oh, you mean you've seen her? You bet I've seen her. And I agree with Dr. Randall. Who, who is Dr. Randall? A wise, sensitive, generous man. He was opposed to Miriam marrying Bruce Alden in the first place. He probably sensed that someone like Sheila would come along. Now, wait, wait a minute. Is that why you dislike Anne, because she plays Sheila? No mother wants to see her son involved with a woman like that. But, Mother, you're talking about imaginary people, characters in a soap opera. That is fiction. It may seem foolish to you, Donald, but believe me, I know what I'm saying. Mother, Anne is not Sheila. She is an actress. It's just make-believe. I know. But your friend Anne couldn't play Sheila so convincingly if she didn't have a lot of Sheila's qualities deep inside her. Oh, Mother, that is nonsense. Is it? What about Gloria Winkler? You mean that little kid I went to grade school with? 
You remember everyone thought she was so marvelous as the witch in Snow White? Well, she turned out to be evil in real life. Yeah, and I play dopey, so does that make me... Sometimes the way you act and the people you associate with, Mother, I think... this is ridiculous. I mean, Anne is a talented actress. She is nothing like the part she plays. She is a terrific girl. Donald, let's go to lunch. If there's anything in the world I don't want to do, it's... it's to interfere. <laughs> Bruce Alden is spending the day with Miriam and the children. Oh, well, it's about time. I'll say. I've had a day to myself in weeks. <laughs> Uh-oh, save this bath mat needs a few more minutes. Would you mind bringing it up with you when you come? I have to go up and start lunch. Go ahead, honey. Just leave it. Thank you. I, uh, I met Judy in the elevator. She told me you were down here. And look, I found out why my mother is so unfriendly to you. Huh? Yeah, she watches that dumb soap opera. It's not dumb. Yeah, but what it's caused is dumb. She's got you all mixed up with that Sheila. You're kidding. No, no. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but that is what's bothering her. What? That I'm the same as Sheila? Right, right. We argued about it all during lunch. Well, now does she understand? No, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I mean, she's got some kind of block about it. I mean, but, but you know, sometimes my mother is a little strange. If you're waiting for me to agree with you, don't. <laughs> Look, I couldn't believe it. She thinks Dr. Somebody or other is a saint because he... Dr. Randall? Yeah, that's it. That's it, Dr. Randall. She thinks he's marvelous and she hates Sheila. And I'm beginning to hate her, too, and I haven't even seen her. Hey, Donald, I've got an idea. Would you mind if I invited your mother over here for dinner? No, 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 no not at all. I think I've got a way of winning her over. <laughs> you sure you want to bother? Positive. After all, she's your mother. Oh, Donald, I'm sorry I yelled at you about going back to Fat Harriet. <laughs> no chance. No chance. I like my girls on the lean side. Well, I'm certainly glad I'm not mad at you anymore, especially right now. Why right now? Because I need another quarter for the washing machine, and I'd never borrow money from a man I was mad at. I don't like that headache. Maybe nothing. You mean you have a real headache? Uh, no, it's the script headache I'm worried about. Danny Stone had a cough in a scene, and five segments later, he was dead. Well, a little headache could be very serious. <laughs> On this show, a hangnail can be fatal. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, George, my boyfriend's mother absolutely adores you. Everybody's mother adores me. I'm irresistible. Unfortunately, however, her love for you was equal by her hatred for me. Because you're playing Sheila? Right, how did you know? Oh, it's an occupational hazard. When you're in a soap opera, people believe that you are what you play. And to her, I'm Sheila. If you would like uh, kindly, wise Dr. Randall, put in a good word for you, just say so. Oh, George, that's just what I had in mind. I'm going to have this little dinner party Wednesday night for Donald and his parents. Would you make a little house call? In an emergency, always. <laughs> I bring my best bedside manner. Oh, thanks, George. My friends call me kindly wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Randall, I... Oh, I'm so thrilled meeting you personally. I just, I just can't get used to calling you by your real name. I, I know you so well as Dr. Randall. Perfectly understandable. <laughs> and as Dr. Randall, I prescribe before dinner drink for you. In that case, I'll, I'll have a little sherry. Oh, I'll get it for you. I'll get it. You know, I, I had the impression you were opposed to alcohol. <laughs> oh, you mean on the show? <laughs> well, I am. I'm opposed to alcohol being used to excess. Oh. I'm opposed to anything being used to excess, including abstinence. <laughs> you know, I never thought of it that way. Here you are, Mrs. Hollinger. Oh, thank you. Yes. Your health, my dear. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, fine. It's just taking a lot longer than I thought. You think your mother's ready for another glass of sherry? No, but kindly wise Dr. Randall is almost ready for another bottle of bourbon. Does he only drink like that? 
Like what? A hippopotamus. You know what I'll never forget? No, Millie, what will you never forget? Four years ago, the operation you performed on little Ella Comiskey. You know what I'll never forget? <laughs> what? I need another drink. Well, everybody, dinner's ready. What's the rush? I need a few more belts first. Well, haven't we had enough? In 45 years, I've never had enough. <laughs> Come on, Millie. Drink up. Let's have a toast to the sweetest little girl in the world. Little Annie Marie. <laughs> George, we really have to eat. Yeah. May I wash you to the table? But I, if there's any waltzing to do, I'll do it. Let's go. <laughs> is getting angry, but your mother seems to like it. Are you kidding? She's in shock. Well, what are we going to do? Well, listen, before we have a real disaster, let's eat fast and get him out of here. Right. Okay, what are we going to have for dinner? Oh, well, I've made a beef stew with wine. <laughs> that should do it. Oh, mighty good food, Ann. You don't get that kind of stew much in Shelton. <laughs> Let me tell you about the time I played Shelton. Uh, Which uh, Shelton do you mean? There are Sheltons in five or six different states. Don't mix me up, Millie. Don't try to trick me. <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, Georgie. I, Georgie, boy, I think that's for you. What's for me? Did you drive here? Uh, well, you're not going to drive. <laughs> I got to drive home. I'm in no condition to walk. Well, you cab. You can mm. pick up your car in the morning. Okay. Would you take him, please? 324 East 48. Good night, Georgie. Oh. Honey, look, I'm sorry the way things turned out. Well, when I think of the work that went into this dinner party, do you know how hard it is to make a moose? You just see the end product. You don't know about the three disasters that came first and went down the garbage disposal. Can I help? No, thank you. Mrs. Hollinger. Mrs. Hollinger. I am very sorry about what happened tonight, but I just wanted you to like me, or dislike me, but for myself. And I wanted to convince you that I am nothing like Sheila. Anne. And Dr. Randall convinced me you're nothing like Sheila. He did? Well, he turned out to be nothing like the man he plays on the show, so... So why should you have to be like Sheila? You know what I think? What? I think my mother may get to like you. You hope so, Donald. And you know what else I think? I think we've got our own private little soap opera going right here. Oh, Anne, what are we having for dessert? Oh, I've made a marvelous chocolate mousse. Ooh, that's so rich. You know that soap opera you were talking about before? Yeah. Well, I think there are going to be a lot more episodes before there's a happy ending. <laughs> Plane and they both left smiling. Uh-huh. How do my ears look? What do you mean? Well, you know that thing about when people talk about you and your ears burn? Uh-huh. Well, right now, mine are on fire. Oh, honey, look, I wouldn't worry about that. Look, I have a feeling that with time, maybe a hundred years, she'll like you. <laughs> you really think so? I'm positive. How could she help it? And as far as that Sheila stuff is concerned, I think she now understands, well, it's just a part on a television show. Oh, I'm not worried about Sheila anymore at all. In fact, Sheila is no longer a problem to anybody. What do you mean? Look, I'll show you. Well, what? Right there. See that direction? Sheila coughs several times. Well, so what? She's got a cold. Not on this show. I figure in about two weeks, Sheila's cough will be pneumonia and Anne Marie will be unemployed. Are you sure? Sure, I'm positive. I checked with the wardrobe man, and they've already ordered Dr. Alden's black suit for my funeral. <laughs> 